Today we are nice enough to be joined by U.S. Senator Bob Casey representing the state of Pennsylvania. Senator Casey, how are you today? Hey, great to be with you. Oh, well, thank you very much for giving us some time uh, to join us. So first things first, we should bring it to the Pennsylvania level. And uh, <clears throat> last Tuesday was a huge, huge day for Secretary Clinton. And I know how you endorsed her for president. And she ended up winning four of the five contests last Tuesday, and the biggest one being the state of Pennsylvania in a landslide over Senator Sanders. What do you believe led to those big victor uh, victories last week, especially in Pennsylvania? And do you see Secretary Clinton kind of uniting the party at this point in the primary season? Yes, I think she can and will unite the party. It's it's not um, an easy task in any uh, in either party in any year, but but I think she she's the kind of nominee who can uh, unify the party and get get the party to a position where we can win in, in November. But I think that it's a combination of reasons. I think I believe as to why why she was so successful in Pennsylvania. Part of it has to do with uh, her own. Uh, work ethic and, and uh, the time she spent in Pennsylvania, not just in the last uh, year, but over many years, campaigning uh, on behalf of President Clinton when he was running, campaigning when she was running in 2008 and won the primary, and then also campaigning for in 2015 and 2016 to get ready for uh, the Pennsylvania primary. So part of it is, is just work ethic and being being in the state, it, I think it helps somewhat when you're when you've got roots in the state. Her dad was from my hometown of Scranton, and so she had roots there. Um, but I think overall, the, the, probably the most compelling reason that people vote for a candidate, especially for president, it's not about the past; it's always about the future. And I think her ideas on uh, focusing on raising incomes, whether that's tax relief for small businesses, investing in infrastructure, uh, funding scientific research, clean energy, and, and breaking down the barriers that uh, a lot of people face who want to get to the middle class. So I think her focus on, on, um, on middle class incomes and, and uh, how to help grow those incomes uh, won the day, and, and that's, uh, that's just a short list of issues. She's had many more. And I saw, actually saw you when Secretary Clinton was campaigning at the film, where you were one of those who opened up with, her, uh, opened up for. Her. And some of the, some of the things I gathered from her speech that night was that a main topic of conversation was talking about security uh, in, in terms of gun control and defeating ISIS, and talking about forming a, co a coalition. And getting, uh, she mentioned, Muslim-majority nations on board to take it down. She really attacked Senator Cruz and Donald Trump talking about how they would not be good commanders-in-chief while she would be. Talk about why you think her Secretary Clinton distances herself from those other candidates and Sec uh, Senator Sanders as well. Well, first of all, I think in, in terms of the, uh, uh, the general election especially, I, I, I do believe the issue of security is going to be more, more of a substantial factor in, in the decision that voters uh, make because you, there's going to be a group of undecided voters and we don't know what percent that will be, whether it's 5% or 8%, whatever number it is. And those Americans are going to make a fundamental decision about uh, electing not just a president but a commander-in-chief. And security is going to be part of that for a whole variety of reasons. I think her work as Secretary of State not only prepares her for that, but gives her a deep understanding of how complicated these issues are. It's easy for a candidate to stand up and say, well, I'm going to defeat ISIS and I'm going to do it quickly or whatever some candidates might say, or I'm going to kill every terrorist in the world and everyone's going to be safe. It's, that's easy to say, but to really keep the country safe over time, it, you have to do uh, work that's not very glamorous, building coalitions, investing in strategies that work to, to reduce extremism, making sure, as you said in your question, that, that you're engaging with folks in communities here in the United States who can help us with that. And if you're going to if you're going to go in the direction that that uh, at least two Republicans, if not many more Republican candidates, talked about about banning you know banning Muslims or these categorical uh, really dangerous uh, proposals, I think you're going to have real real problems. So she has not just the experience, but again, I get back to the future. 
uh, her plans on her website tell you exactly what she's going to do. It's not some theory or some boast or some statement. It's in writing. She has a whole section on her website of 30 different issues that she's, 30 major issues. And one of them is, is national security and, and taking on the threat of violent extremism. And so we're joined now here by U.S. Senator Bob Casey. And Senator Casey, uh, going back to security, is it all concerning to you about what Hillary Clinton may or may not have done regarding her emails, her time as Secretary of State? Do you think she has what it takes to build a coalition? Certainly Republicans pointing to the incident in Benghazi as a, as a prime example that she really doesn't have what it takes to go forward and lead keeping us safe uh, into the future. Oh, I, th- I think she she has all the uh, uh, all of the experience that that's um, essential, and um, re- you know Republicans had <laughs> how, how many how many investigations and how many months uh, of of review did they undertake, and, and and then they put her on the the stand in essence for what was it eleven hours of testimony? Um, I, I think that every possible question has been raised about uh, what happened in, in 2012 in Benghazi and they've they've never made a, a case against her in, in every investigation that, that reviewed that so no matter how many times they use that word to get to get uh, people's attention and to get people I guess in their base riled up uh, you, eventually you have to get to some facts and I think they've had trouble um, getting to those facts. No, look, I, I think her, her experience in, in both foreign policy and security is substantial. Part of it is being in the room when decisions are made about about national security, and part of it is, as I said, doing the unglamorous, tedious, difficult work day after day, week after week of building relationships and, and uh, building a coalition that can not only... Uh, help you begin the process, as she did, of getting a, a deal on, a, on preventing Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, but also helping to to build and fortify those coalitions that we need, not only to take on ISIS or terrorism, but also to build a stronger framework and a whole range of things that the international community has to do together. So uh, foreign policy and security work is, is, is difficult. And you, you need years of experience. It's not something you can learn in a briefing paper or learn from your advisors. You have to be immersed in it like she has been. And you also have to know how much time to spend on a problem. You can't spend your whole day on, on you, you can't spend a whole month, I should say, on the Middle East. You have, you have three, three or four hundred other issues you got to get to. So knowing how much time she can allocate to a complicated security or foreign policy issue uh, will be a great advantage when she's president. And do you think, you know, you mentioned that time of how much how much it actually takes to learn foreign policy and, and go forward and actually understand it. I mean, if we look at uh, President Obama right now, one Senator Obama, um, not really much foreign policy experience, taps Joe Biden as his vice president, who has had a lot of time in the Senate, kind of knows how uh, foreign relations work and lived through his advisors. Do you think that that has helped him, hurt him, if, if we're kind of basing it off of that theory? Oh, there's no question. I think that Vice President Biden added immeasurably to uh, uh, to the, the work that their team could do together. Um, but I, I, I was in, when, when then candidate Obama was running. Um, I, I was impressed by his um, direct experience uh, because he was a member of the Foreign Relations Committee for four years. Um, I, I was on that committee for. Uh, for six years, and um, having having years on that committee is very very valuable. Um, but in, in Hillary's case, it's even more substantial experience because um, e- even if you're on the Foreign Relations Committee for many many years, uh, I'm not sure anything prepares you as well as being Secretary of State for four years and all of the the challenges of that, um, that that come with that. So she has. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm not sure anyone in my lifetime has the degree of uh, uh, foreign policy experience she has coming into, uh, not just coming into the campaign, but but, uh, will have coming into into the White House.
Talking to United States Senator Bob Casey here with us on WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. You can listen to us, listen to us on iHeartRadio. Download the iHeart application on your phone or mobile device today. Uh, bringing it back to the Pennsylvania uh, level, Senator, uh, we know that the Democratic Party really rallied around Katie McGinty and yourself. Uh, you also endorsed Katie in that uh, primary, and she won in convincing fashion against Joe Sestak and John Fetterman. As a matter of fact, we had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Terry Madonna for Franklin and Marshall polling that day, and we knew that Katie had a chance of winning and a decent chance at that, but she won in such a convincing fashion that it really impressed, I think, a lot of people, and we know that she has to keep that momentum up to take down uh, Senator Pat Toomey, uh, the incumbent right now. Talk about what do you think she's going to hammer home to the voters of Pennsylvania to to tell them basically that she is the right candidate for Senate and not Senator Pat Toomey. I think first of all, you, you, you mentioned the the, uh, the substantial win that she had, winning by more than ten percentage points, and also uh, I think she won. If you look at the map, I mean, it's a remarkable map. I think fifty nine, fifty or fifty nine out of the sixty seven counties, which is a huge, huge win. Um, but look, I think her her uh, general election campaign message will be very similar to what she said when she was running in the primary, uh, that she's going to focus on that basic issue of raising uh, incomes for for middle-class families, and the part of the way, not the only way, but part of the way that uh, you get there is by focusing on raising the minimum wage, equal pay for equal work, uh, investing in strategies that allow families to uh, both hold down a job and also raise their family, quality child care that's affordable. Uh, early learning, all of those fundamental building blocks that, that workers uh, need some help with in order to to make, both make ends meet and raise a family. So that that plus, I think her focus on on college affordability, which is uh, among the might be the biggest challenge most middle class families have, and then strengthening Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security, and not allowing it to be uh, privatized or turned into, in the case of Medicare, a voucher program. So I think there's going to be a real contrast on issues, and uh, I think that will be apparent by the end of the race. Last question here for Senator Bob Casey with us on WHIP Radio. And before we let you go, I had to get your input on the GOP race right now because it's obviously grabbed a lot of national headlines. And we're in the month of May, and it really appears that Donald Trump, it's it's pretty evident that not only is he the front runner, it's he's getting very very close to that nomination. And a senator Ted Cruz needs a big day today in Indiana to kind of hold on and kind of stay afloat to stay afloat, so to speak. And let's not forget that uh, he's a senator, you're a senator as well, so he's one of your colleagues. And Senator Cruz has had a rough couple of weeks, to say the least. Last week, Donald Trump won all five contests, and the former Speaker of the House, John Boehner, recently described uh, Senator Cruz as Lucifer in the flesh. (laughs) Can you please give us, uh, quickly, what your experiences have been working with Senator Cruz in the Senate, and why Secretary Clinton would be a better uh, better president than Senator Cruz? Well, I'll start with with Secretary Clinton. Um, She would be a, a, a better president than any Republican that's run this year. For a couple of reasons, experience, um, uh, you know, the basic you know, preparation you need to be president. Um, her ideas, I think, are the best ideas for the country in terms of both domestic and and, and uh, foreign policy as well as security. And uh, I think she can unite the country just like I think she'll be able to unite uh, our party. I haven't worked with Senator Cruz all that much. We just don't um, serve on on. Uh, uh, any of the same committees. Um, for example, I'm on the Finance Committee, uh, which I'm very lucky to be on. <laughs> He's on the Judiciary Committee, which is a, one of the top committees in the Senate, but there's really no overlap in committee work. So I don't know him very well at all. Um, but I, I, I'd say this generally about the, the, the Republican uh, presidential candidates. They, um, I think they're going to have to figure out a way as a party to pre- present uh, a message that speaks to the middle class and speaks to uh, uh, folks that have been either left out or or uh, uh, or, or become the objects of uh, a lot of hostility. I mean, if you're going to run a party, if you're going to have a national party that's focused pretty much on uh, stopping the president at every turn 
uh, and in some cases using the most vile rhetoric against the president, and you're going to be hostile to, to immigrants and, and hostile to a whole group of Americans, it's difficult to to win an election when, when you have that kind of a, an approach. So they, I think as a party, they need to do some real rethinking, and they better do it quickly because they've got an election this year where, where um, I think it's going to be a difficult terrain for them. Absolutely. And just quickly, you brought up rhetoric there, and the GOP frontrunner, Donald Trump, has uh, garnered, a lot of nas- garnered a national lot of uh, headlines with the talk of his rhetoric. What have you made of Donald Trump's rhetoric in the election thus far? Well, <laughs> look, when you're president um, and when you're a candidate for president, you're supposed to be um, you're supposed to be focused on unifying your party and then ultimately unif- unifying the country. And it's very difficult to do that when you use uh, rhetoric that is so divisive. So if um, if you want to be nominated, that's one thing. Um, but if you, the, the, the bigger the bigger contest is the is the general election. If you want to be elected, I think you have to you have to use rhetoric that's more unifying as opposed to rhetoric that uh, pushes people away. There we go. That is United States Senator Bob Casey representing the state of Pennsylvania. Nice enough to join us for a couple minutes here on WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. Senator Casey, thank you very much, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Hey, thanks for the time. Appreciate it.